Hello, everybody. Welcome to the channel. My name is Jay God, and we're going to talk a little bit about how spawns work within Modern Warfare and how you can prevent some bad spawns, which eventually lead to you getting spawn trapped or you spawn trapping the enemy team. By knowing these mechanics and how they work for every individual map as well as mode, whether that's 6v6, 10v10, or ground war, that's going to allow you to streak up a little bit easier and limit some of those deaths that probably shouldn't happen. If you do enjoy the video in any way, let me know by hitting the like button. I do have a goal of 500 likes. If you're brand new to the channel, haven't yet subscribed, definitely consider subscribing if you like what you find on the channel and are looking to find your way back. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the first part of this is that I'm going to be playing with bots, which isn't a huge deal. But the reason why I played with bots, and I'm going to show you a little bit in this match, another match, and then a third match that involves ground war, and that one's a real match. And what I really want you to focus on here is I have the mini-map set that the, the dots will always pop up on the mini-map, and you can see where the enemies are. So we're going to skip ahead just a little bit. And the main reason I wanted to show this is because pretty much how this map works is there's like an imaginary line uh, that cuts across the map. And what you're going to see is that pretty much as long as a majority of your team is behind that line, the enemies will have very predictable spawns, almost to the point where you could pretty much guess nine times out of 10 exactly where they're going to spawn. And when it comes to this specific scenario, the enemy should be spawning on this corner. Uh, hopefully you can see that little yellow circle that I'm highlighting there um, or in the bottom side on the back side of C or somewhere in between that back side. So pretty straightforward there. Look at how this unfolds. I come out. I take this guy out, pretty easy kill, and then I'm coming back through, and you can see that there's a guy right here, take him out, and look at where all the enemies are. But look at where my teammates are, and this is what happens in regular public matches. You have teammates that just don't know better, they might have just been like yourself, this is your first Call of Duty, and you don't understand that you really only want to hold two flags, and in this particular case, you want to hold the A flag as well as the B flag. And you can see how easy these kills are when I know exactly where they are. Obviously, you can say, hey, they're popping up as red dots. But you'll see in the next match, I turn that part off and I still use the same thought process. And it gives you a better idea when it comes to playing Rust and how to know where the enemies are going to be. So we'll go ahead and watch this play out really quick. And you're going to see when it gets messed up. So what happens right here is if you pay close attention is like I said, my teammates are taking the objective and watch when the enemy spawns over by A. You see my teammate pushed up on this left side. This guy's about to go inside the building and then this one's a little bit close. You can see him right on the front of the screen. So they're dead. And watch as soon as the spawns flip. Watch, you'll see it. He'll pop up over here on the A side. The teammate went too deep. Boom, look at how immediate that was. And then you end up with really wonky spawns. So that's why you can't push in because literally now this guy is primed to sneak around, flank, and get some easy kills, which lead to a UAV or another streak that can kill you off your streak. Well, that's the cruise missile, which is very low end in terms of needed kills. So now we're going to rush back. Teammates going to end up killing that guy. We'll see that part play out. And then as I come back through... The enemy is retaking that flag. So most of the enemies should be on this backside. And it just makes it really easy to guess where people are going to be. Because now all of them should be spawning on this back side and left side. Pretty much come out. Easy kills. These are obviously all bots. But look at where they all keep coming from. Ends up being rather easy. If I was really focused on positioning myself, sound whoring, I can actually jump in here. And they're still going to spawn. But you can see as soon as the flag was captured, I'm still in a good spot. And now I'm going to force flip it. Look at it. As soon as I force flip it, the guy spawns on the opposite side. Come through. Get some kills here. And then look at where they're going to continue spawning. Because my teammates are still heavily spawning and pushing on that side, the guy ends up force spawning to this corner. And I wouldn't know that unless I had the little dots on because there was really no indication that the spawns would have flipped back and that it's kind of reverting back and forth because we're all scattered out. And that's where the unpredictability comes in when you actually start capping the third objective or your teammates jump in a little too far, then you're not sure if the spawns have flipped completely. But if we go a little bit later in this match, because I don't want to cover the whole match, we get to a point where pretty much my teammates are all back here and I'm just feeding off of these enemy players or these, these bots. And I'm just continually going back and forth and taking the multiple of them out. And I can, can continue pushing back here, knowing that they will only spawn in this back section. See how perfect it is when teammates are sitting back? Almost as if, like, if I was controlling them, 
spawn trapping, my team would be posted up, and I would just focus on getting the kills all in this line. They could post up on this left side of me, kind of where I'm at, kind of on top of that, the, the train car, uh, on top of the side, whatever it is. But as soon as he captures the objective, it gets a little bit wonky, and we can get in a position where the spawns could t potentially flip. That's why I kind of back off, still getting the kill, and you can see where majority of these kills are coming from. Obviously, if we're a little bit too deep in this spawn because you have really campy teammates, or and or we, we jump in here and we, we take out these spawns, the enemy could spawn on this side with the trees. So it's kind of one of those things that you kind of got to figure it out as you go, but you can see how immediate the spawns flip back and forth. So we're going to go to another example with Rust. And with Rust, you're going to see this does not have the compass going on. Still the same thing. Since I don't have the red dots on the minimap the entire time without a UAV, you can kind of see where the enemies are coming from. I get shotgun one burst, pretty crazy. Um, but as I come through, it gets really easy to predict where enemies are going to be. I come through this way. I know there's three enemies over here because that UAV is still active. But watch, as soon as the UAVs are gone and run out, I still have a pretty good idea of when the spawns are going to flip. Come through, and you can see a majority of the enemies are in this back corner. So as long as nobody pushes too deep to that side, we should be pretty good. There's one that still snuck around on this side. He's going to get taken out, hopefully, by my teammate. Another one right here on the right. Take him out. And then now, everyone should be directly in front of me. I'm trying to capture this so we get a little bit of anchoring with the actual spawns. Because then it can kind of force them to that side of the map where C is. That's one of the reasons why Rust is relatively unbalanced. So look at, look at it. It's going to be super easy. They're just going to continue running out from the side. They rush out the right side. I'm able to take them out. If they rush out the left, it's pretty straightforward kills. I don't want to push around that corner because then I'm going to push them over to this side by B. And it makes it very hard to predict. Enemy doesn't, I mean, the teammate doesn't know. He's a bot. So he's jumping on the objective with the, and I keep backing up because I know that if I stay back here, I'm forced spawning the enemy in this corner because none of my teammates have made it to that corner. I'm forced spawning the enemy in this corner. You can see my teammates working around the left side. So as long as I don't push too far forward, I should be fine. And that's why I continually back off because if I do push too far forward, I've done a spawn flip and now I have a potential of someone just spawning up behind me, running up and shooting me in the back, which inevitably ends up feeling like, man, why the hell did that guy spawn there? Well, you contribute to it in a lot of ways and you might not necessarily realize it. And that's why is obviously people are going to say, hey, man, you're camping in this corner. But in reality, this map is kind of small. You almost have to play it this way. But as long as I do this, you can see that the spawns are pretty rigid. None of my teammates have made it back to this back corner on the right side. And the enemies just continue to spawn there. Take that one out. Come through. There's more. I'm running out of ammo. So they end up spawning in this corner. And if my teammates decide to push up a little bit, the enemies will all spawn in the other corner by B. So sometimes you can get a little bit of wonkiness going on. But even without that UAV in the air and without the portable radar, you get a good idea of where enemies are going to be because you kind of have the general spawns of what they're going to be. And obviously with real people, they're, they're much faster reflexes. They're probably going to take you out. You're just running around recklessly like that. That's not the point of this video. The point is really kind of dialing in how the spawns work and how you can benefit from those and put yourself in strategic power positions. This would be considered one of the power positions as long as your teammate is holding down the flag or the map on the right side over by B where I was. If you have somebody doing kind of what I'm doing, not necessarily right now, but when I was in that corner, you're forcing the enemies to spawn in this corner, where if they run out to this left side straight ahead towards B, they're going to get shot. And if they come through this right side, they're going to get shot. If you have someone on the tower, then you end up kind of from three different power positions spawn trapping the enemy player, and it just makes it relatively easy. Um, and this is why you get spawn trapped, because if you don't leave that corner and you really rigid in there and you can't break out, Odds are you're just going to continue to get spawn trapped repeatedly and the enemy team's going to start streaking up and everything's going to go a little bit lopsided. Especially as a solo player, this can be incredibly difficult. Now you can see the enemies are primarily spawning in this left corner where my teammates are. They're back in that C corner. I help them out there. And most of the enemies should be on this back left side. There he is going around. Just waiting for him to pop out. Easy kills. And that's where majority of them are going to be. And that's pretty much how that particular concept works. And then the thing I want to focus on here is I've kind of dabbled in it before in the past, but this is specific to ground war. They're going to be removing tanks 
for an infantry ground war mode this week so i would highly encourage you to check it out i know a lot of people feel a little bit more timid in going into ground war because they're not as familiar so i'm going to give you some basic fundamentals really quick breeze through and give you an idea on how those particular things work so you can see it in action and then also replicate it yourself so you can go on longer streaks and finish every match with at least 40 50 kills when you are playing ground war which is relatively easy as long as you know what's going on here here's the, how the objectives are right the enemy is over here on the west side of the map and then we are over on the east side of the map and we have e we're about to capture c and we're about to capture d most of the enemies more than likely are going to be spawning up at b if they're not dead if they're dying they're, they're probably going to be spawning at b if they're if they haven't died yet they're pushing up and they'll probably be trying to take c so when I come out the opening rush, there's going to be a lot of enemies between where this blue player is all the way down. And then ideally that's how those will work. And they'll continue spawning in. And now the spawns just got blocked. Anytime a teammate or an, uh, an enemy is on an objective where it gets contested in any way, it shuts down the ability to, for people to spawn in. They can only spawn on teammates. So right here, I'm just trying to pick off people as I know they're spawning deep. And I'm keeping people from getting to B as easily. And I'm just utilizing the vehicle, kind of strafing back and forth, using it as cover, uh, trying to stay off the people's radar, uh, considering that, you know, I'm out in the open. So more people as they rush, I'm able to just take them out pretty easily. And I already got my cruise missile. We got that one. I'm going to spawn on B. And look at where I spawn. So what happens is when you look at the spawns for this mode, Pretty much what ends up happening is you have to imagine these ovals on the screen when you're picking your spawn. So in reality with B, the enemy oval will be an oval like on this side of B, closer to their, their headquarters. And our bubble is going to be directly towards our headquarters. So I'm going to spawn anywhere in this bubble here. So when I click B for a spawn, I know pretty much an idea where I'm spawning from. If I spawned over on D, that means I'm going to be spawned over here in the backside, kind of around over here. And then I got to push into C. So ideally, the reason why I want to spawn at B is because then I can come up attack C. Or I want to spawn at E and then come up through the palace. And that gives me two different ways I can actually attack the building. And by capturing C, then that allows us to get middle map control along with D. And that pushes all the enemies pretty much into predictable areas. I'm going to spawn on B. And you're going to see where I spawn. It's, it's where I kind of would expect it to be. I'm right on the edge there. So what inevitably happens here is once we got a good grasp of all the different objectives, most of the enemies can only spawn on each other here. They are trying to gather C, which kind of sucks because then that's going to allow them to have a spawn point. So when you're playing ground war, you got to be aware of all these various things and position yourself in a way that you're going to be able to win uh, more gunfights with how you position and how you're able to get in and out of spawn. So right here, when the enemy has the B flag only, a majority of them are going to be in the B building, pushing from B all the way across the D. Little Wally is coming for them this way. So majority of the enemies should be on that sight line. And pretty much that's how you have to handle it, is if there's enemies all going to be in that building. You can see where a couple of them are. I'm debating on how I want to position myself. I jump out, pretty much laser that guy. I know I have a VTOL. So as soon as I get an opportunity to call it in, I would place it right over top of B. And that should allow us to DEF CON, even though we're ahead by a significant amount, that would put us even further ahead. The guy's up top now. It looks like my teammates are getting in gunfights there. I'm expecting a guy to rush up here because I see them on the minimap. And then I'm just kind of waiting, position. The little bit of a wally's coming through, and then I could place that VTOL. And that's kind of how the spawns work. They're pretty straightforward. Allows you to predict things very easily. And that's pretty normal. You can get 40, 50, 60 kills uh, in the lobby. There was four or five people that did that. And the match ended rather quickly. It wasn't even a close match. We won 250 to 111. And a lot of that has to do with getting your streaks early. Don't worry about the level one. That's a glitch because that was my first match on. Normally, if I record my first match on, that's what it ends up giving me. But that's pretty much how it is. If you guys have additional questions, be as specific as possible within the comments section so I can address those specific concerns. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button. Again, 500 likes on the video is the goal. And if you're brand new to the channel or just haven't yet subscribed, definitely consider subscribing with notifications on. Appreciate all the support on the channel. Thank you for watching. As always, have a great day.